20 seconds or so here. Guess where we are. Welcome to the uh, Computer Security Seminar from um, Purdue University. Uh, today's speaker is uh, Professor uh, uh, William uh, Winsborough from, uh, from, uh, from George Mason University. And he will talk on um, access, I'm sorry, attribute based access uh, control. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. So the area of my research is uh, policy-based security and privacy for distributed systems. Uh, in particular, I'm interested in situations where we have decentralized authority and uh, each principle in the system has the opportunity to contribute some policy statements that together compose to form the, uh, or de define the behavior of the system as a whole. So today I'll be talking about uh, some work that I've been doing for the last several years in developing flexible and scalable access control for decentralized and collaborative environments as well as open systems like the internet. So the approach that we take to uh, making authorization decisions is to base them on attributes of the resource requester, such as rights that they have to access specific resources, or roles that they occupy in their home organizations, qualifies that they might have, like uh, degrees, or other characteristics, like their age or nationality. And um, credentials are then used to uh, establish someone's authorizations offline. These credentials consist of signed policy statements about the attributes of speci uh, specific individuals, principles identified in the credentials, or else they can also contain uh, rules for deriving attributes. What I'll talk about in today's lecture is three things. First, I'll introduce an authorization policy language that supports collaboration in decentralized and open systems. And then I'll talk about uh, analysis techniques that we've developed for understanding and managing how uh, policy delegates authority among various principles in the system. And then finally, I'll talk about the problem that uh, because the credentials may have uh, sensitive information in them, they themselves may have to be the subject of access control. So we'll begin with policy language design. And uh, this is work uh, that I did with Ninghui Lee and John Mitchell, which was published in uh, the 2002 Oakland conference. Um, I'll talk about the requirements for a language, give a couple of examples, introduce the syntax and semantics. So first and foremost, what we want from a uh, attribute-based authorization language is the ability to decentralize the authority to define attributes. Basically, we want to have the opportunity for lots of different people to make claims about uh, principles within the system. And then we'll utilize policy and credentials from many sources in making authorization decisions. So policies, or one uh, person may delegate authority to another for the purposes of uh, controlling some resource. And this could be um, delegation to a specific principle by name, but we'd also like to be able to support delegation to principles that uh, satisfy certain attributes. So this is not by name, but by attribute. We want to be able to support the inference of attributes from one or more other attributes, like when we would uh, derive access rights based on roles or other characteristics. We'd also like to support parameterization so that a uh, an age attribute could actually have a numeric field in it and say, you know, what the v age value is. Uh, we'd like to be able to support th thresholds, which is basically a kind of voting, and separation of duties, which is a uh, technique that can be used to um, reduce the, or make fraud more difficult to commit. So the language that we'll be working with for this talk 
is called RT, for Role-Based Trust Management. RT is actually a family of policy languages, the simplest member of which, RT0, uh, satisfies all the requirements on the previous slide except for the three shown here. It doesn't support parameterization, thresholds, or separation of duties. Those features are supported by other members of the RT family, but we won't talk about them in today's talk. So here are four example RT0 credentials. Uh, the first one is issued by EPUB, an electronic publishing house, which says that students at State U are entitled to a student discount. So EPUB uh, is a principal that has a, a key that he can use for the purpose of signing this uh, statement, turning it into a credential then can be, that can be verified offline. And the credential will also contain the, uh, the public key of State U, which can be used then to check the signatures on the second and third credentials, uh, in which State U says that somebody's a student if the university registrar says that they're registered for either a part-time or a full-time load. Down here in the last credential, the registrar says that Alice is registered for a part-time load, so that's effectively her student ID. And it can be combined with the other three, uh, the, the other um, red credentials here to prove that Alice is authorized for EPUB student discount. So Alice could present these credentials and uh, obtain the discount uh, without uh, the authorizer ever having uh, heard of State U or the U registrar or knowing their public keys ahead of time. Now, in the example I just gave, delegation is made to a particular individual, uh, an individual university, State U. But in general, you might like to be able to support delegation to uh, any university. So EPUB would like to be able to accept the student IDs of uh, students from arbitrary universities. Now, how would you do that? You know, you could put in your policy every single university and um, say that their students are uh, authorized. But this presents many problems, not the least of which is maintenance, but maybe the biggest is that um, EPUB is probably not an authority on what's a, a real university. You know, does uh, a mechanic school or a beautician school or something like that qualify? Well, the authorities on who, what's a real university are accrediting agencies or accrediting boards, excuse me. Um, so in the second credential, EPUB delegates to uh, FAB, a fictitious accrediting board, saying that uh, anybody that's FAB accredited is considered to be a university by EPUB. And since State U has a uh, credential that says that he's accredited, um, all right, here we go. Right here, EPUB.university can include people like State U. So if uh, Alice shows using credentials that we saw already that she is a State U student, then uh, she would be entitled to the student discount. So the basic structure in RT is a role which has the form uh, A.R in which A is a principal and R is a role name. There are four different kinds of statements that A can issue in order to define who's actually in his role A.R. The first one, A.R includes D, just says that the principal D is a member. The second one, a delegates some authority to B. He's saying anybody that is in B's B.R1 role is in A.R. So A.R cont contains B.R1 as a, sup as a subset. The third form of statement says that A.R includes B.R2 for all B in A.R1. So B would be like the university in our previous example. 